Hello everybody, Adam Lusek here, and today we're going to be looking at Langraph Cloud. Now Langraph Cloud was announced a few weeks ago by the Langchain team, and it's essentially their one-stop shop for packaging up Langraph-based LLM agents and being able to deploy them for production-ready use cases. Now we've gone over a lot of Langraph-based agents on this YouTube channel, like the local YouTube reflection agent, the Llama 3 research agent, different frameworks like multi-agent collaboration or agent supervisor. And all of these have been built using the Langraph package. So when I saw that this was announced, I was super eager to give it a shot. And so needless to say, thanks to the wonderful team over at Langchain, I've gotten closed beta access to Langraph Cloud. So we're gonna jump in and show you all exactly how it works. The first step then is of course, coming up with the agent and the graph that we're going to deploy. And so the first idea that I had is that it's always kind of been annoying to me that GPT 3.5 Turbo on the chat GPT interface does not have all of the advanced reasoning and tool capabilities that things like GPT-4 and GPT-4.0 have. Despite being a very large, capable model that's very good at a lot of tasks, they don't have the ability for it to call the DALI tool to make images. It can't search the web for real-time data. Its math and reasoning skills are pretty decent, but not the best. And then it also can't execute Python code in its own environment. For my idea and for the agent that we're going to deploy, we're going to use GPT 3.5 Turbo, give it more advanced reasoning capabilities, as well as all of these tools to fully unleash its true potential. To set that up, we're of course going to be using the Langchain and Langgraph packages to make sure that everything's in the right format to be deployed on Langgraph Cloud. I'm not gonna go too deep into how a lot of these things are set up. I have more videos that show the specifics on how Langgraph actually operates, setting up your custom tools and executing those agents. So I'll link those in the description below. Starting then with the first tool and capability that we're going to add to GPT 3.5's arsenal, web search. We're going to be using the DuckDuckGo Python API and Langchain's integration and wrapper around it to create this DuckDuckGo search tool. If we invoke it here and show how that works, if I just put in a natural query like weather in New York City, it'll return a bunch of snippets from web pages of the results. The next one is going to be a more advanced math tool. And to do this, we'll be taking advantage of Wolfram Alpha's LLM API that allows you to pass in a natural language query and get back your response from Wolfram Alpha. So setting this all up and invoking it with just a very simple nine plus 11, we can see that we get back pretty much instantly the result of 20. The third one is being able to use the Dolly image API so that it can generate its own images. And to do this, we'll just be using the standard OpenAI API, passing in our model of Dolly, our prompt, and then if we invoke it with something like a cold rainy day in the city, which it is today, we'll get back a link to a picture. So since that's generating, it takes a couple seconds for that to actually be made, but then we get back a link that looks like this. And when we open it up, we see a cold rainy day in the city. And the fourth and final tool that we want to add is a Python read eval print loop, which will allow the LLM to both write and execute Python commands. This is once again set up from an integration with Langchain and also a word of caution as the LLM will be able to write and execute pretty much any code on your own machine. So it can be destructive if not done in a controlled environment. And so now that we have all four of our tools defined, our web search tool, our math tool, our image generation tool, and our Python execution tool, we're gonna package them all up into a nice list here and then instantiate the LLM object as well. Of course, we're going to be using GPT 3.5 Turbo as previously mentioned, and just for a little bit of fun, put the temperature to 0.7. And so now to package up our LLM and the tools into an agentic architecture and give it a little bit more of that advanced reasoning, we're going to be looking at the React agent. And React comes from this paper here, synergizing reasoning and acting in language models, and essentially is a framework that allows for a chain of thought reasoning where an LLM will reason through a problem take some actions, observe those actions, and then finally return its final response. More specifically, it's going to look like this graph here on the left, where we're going to start with our input. The agent, which is the LLM in this, will use any tools available to it, either once or multiple times, observe what the tool outputs are, see if it has enough information to confidently answer the user's query, and then only once it does, it will end and return its final output message. The Langgraph package makes it dead easy to put these together because they already have a pre-built create react agent method here, where you can pass in the LLM, the tools, and any different message modifiers as well if you want, which I pass in a little bit of a system prompt that says ensure generation of the image URL is exact, always use Wolfram Alpha, different things like that print your executed Python statements, and then you can package that all up 
into what I have put together here as build your own chat GPT. And essentially this is creating the LangGraph graph. Of course, it's not a requirement to use this specific function to create your LangGraph graph for LangGraph Cloud. You can do sort of the traditional way of defining your states, creating your nodes, and putting it all together to create your graph and then pass that through. This just handles all of that for a pretty powerful architecture with the React agent, all in one simple method here. And so now that that's all defined, let's actually try it out. And I'm going to prompt it with the prompt, what is, you know, this nice long math problem? What is the weather in San Francisco? Can you make an image of a pixel art computer? And also, can you execute hello world in Python? The rest of the code here is just handling, taking the output from the agent and displaying it nicely in something like a markdown format here. So. Kicking that off, we can see that it's already reasoned through and called four tools. Our math tool with a query of the equation, our web search tool with weather in San Francisco, generate Dolly with pixel art computer, and our Python repl tool with print hello world. We've got the tool output for the first one of the math problem, tool output of the web search, tool output from Dolly, and tool output from our repl tool. And so now our final agent message that would be shown to the user is the value of this math problem is this. The weather in San Francisco is mostly clear. It's a low around 57 and a high near 80 today. This is the image that was generated and executed hello world in Python. Phenomenal. So now that that's all defined, what we need to do is put it into a format so that we can deploy it to LangGraph Cloud. And this is the structure that it's going to be expecting. We're going to need an agent.py file where this will have all of the code for actually setting up our agent. It will also expect a langgraph.json file where you can explicitly put in your dependencies. If you put in this dot here, what it'll do is it'll default to the requirements.txt, which is another file that you can pass in if you don't want to put it all in this langgraph.json file. And of course, the requirements.txt is very similar to every single requirements.txt that you've probably seen that just lists out all of the package that, packages that are going to be necessary to be installed along the way. Additionally, you're going to have to path over to the graph. And what we see here is that it's pathing over to agent.py, which is our file here, and then the specific variable where the graph is compiled into, which is going to be byo underscore chat GPT, which is right there. And then for local testing purposes, we have to put in the dot environment. And this is where I'll be passing in all of my different API keys for OpenAI and then also for LangGraph Cloud as well, so that this can all go smoothly. Environment variables are actually handled a little bit differently once we actually deploy this, but what we first need to do is test it locally to make sure that everything's working. Which to do that, we'll make sure we're in the same directory as all of these files, and then we'll run the LangGraph up command. And this will start our local API server where we can test out and make sure that everything's running nice. All that's required to get this up and running is having Docker open, and then of course having a valid API key with LangGraph Cloud access. And so now that we have our API server up and running, we can try and ping it to see if our agent actually works there behind the scenes. So I've got this curl command that will ask, when was LangGraph Cloud released? And when we send that out, we can see that this is all working great. So the LLM actually did a function call, searched the web for it, and then eventually returned some answers, which not very easy to find in the whole mess of this, but things will get easier once we actually deploy it, which thankfully, seeing that this is working all well, is ready to deploy. So heading over to the Langsmith deployments tab here and clicking on new deployment, you can see that it's actually going to want a specific GitHub repo, which I have set up here. And now taking the files, the three main ones, our agent.py, where we set up our LangGraph graph, our LangGraph.json, where we pass in our API config files, and then the requirements.txt, where we specify the Python packages necessary, I've uploaded them all to the main branch in this GitHub repo. And this is what we're going to path to then in our deployments here with BYO chat GPT to get things up and running. It takes in a few additional arguments. You're going to give this a name, so I will put in BYO chat GPT just here. And then optionally, if you have different names for the files or different branches on Git that you want to reference, you can pass those in here. Both of the deployment types that are offered right now is development, which serves up to 50 requests a second with no storage backups, or production, which is up to 500 requests a second with highly available storage with automated backups. We're just going to use development. And then this is also where you can add in your develop or your environment variables, which is where all your secret keys, like your OpenAI API key, or maybe your Wolfram Alpha app ID key might go, or the others that are necessary to be referenced in your actual setup of your graph. So once we submit that, it will get started actually deploying it. Great. So it's automatically pathed us over here. 
and it's saying waiting for build, we can open up and check out the build and deploy logs, and eventually it'll start populating here with what it's doing to get this up and running. Sweet, so after about a minute, you can see that all of these logs are nicely coming in. And so after only a couple minutes of building, it's now moved on to deploying. And only four minutes later, we now have our React agent fully deployed and available via API, running completely from LangGraph Cloud. The first thing that we can do now that this is up and running is actually play around with it in LangGraph Studio. So clicking on this, it brings up this really nice and neat diagram here of the actual agent. And then what we can do is input our own messages. So I'll just hit it with a message of when was LangGraph Cloud released. And then after hitting submit, you can actually see the path that it takes and what's going down here. And it displays it really nicely here on the side. So we see that LangGraph Cloud was released in beta and it didn't give us an exact date. That's okay. But what we're seeing here is that you can actually follow this trace almost exactly directly from the start. You can see what the agent did, which is it called a tool with the query LangGraph Cloud release date. You can see what the tools output was here, and then the final agent output that led to the end. I really like what they've done here with having this ability to hover over these messages, and then also while it's actually being executed, see where it's going in the actual graph here. So let's hit it with another message of create an image of a fun summary day. Some wishful hoping. And you can see that it actually will follow up from the last message. So this relies on a thing called threads. And essentially, the thread will hold all of the history of everything and all of your conversations that have pre previously been had. But as we can see, look at that. That looks like a fun summary day. One of the neat things that you can actually do right off the bat here is if you're testing these, you can add different interrupts. So let me put an interrupt on the tools and then ask a different message of create an image of a cat. And what that'll allow you to do is it'll actually run through. And then once it hits this, it'll interrupt so that you can see it. You can see all of the different things that are going on. You might be able to continue it or end it or add a different annotation in Langsmith to look at it further later. So I'll just click continue on this and it'll run as normally. Oh, that's a pretty cute cat. But to actually use this outside of the interface, you now have this API URL that was generated that you can reference to do all sorts of fun things with your hosted graph agent. And along with that, they have a very detailed API that'll allow you to do pretty much anything that you'd like to do in a production setting using this LangGraph agent. But now that the agent is being deployed and hosted, you can ping it with the API in all sorts of ways and set up some really fun stuff really quickly. Like I've just got this quick Gradio interface that'll allow me to interact with the agent from my own kind of made interface. So if I hit it with something like this long prompt that I was doing to test it earlier, we now have just a nice interface that is almost like ChatGPT running on our React agent with GPT 3.5 Turbo with all four different tools, giving it the true potential that I knew it had. And so after a few seconds here, I've got all the tool calls listed out here. And then this is the actual AI response here. So it'll print out all of this nicely. And we've effectively given GPT 3.5 Turbo the full functionality of ChatGPT. And now we have it in our own environment, in our own system, and we can add all sorts of features and functionalities to it that we want. As this is all integrated with the LangChain ecosystem and LangSmith, this also allows us really powerful monitoring and observability capabilities. So we see that they have really, really nice graphs here set up so that we can track all sorts of things that we might want, like LLM call success, LLM trace success, latency, tokens per second, tokens per trace, all this stuff here. And then also, if we go super far into it, we can see individual threads, exactly what was going on in them to debug and see what each call was and how it operates, works, and everything that was needed to actually get this running. And so with LangGraph Cloud, this really allows us to rapidly iterate on, deploy, and use and productionize these more advanced agentic systems with language models. That being said, really impressed with the current functionality of LangGraph Cloud, its monitoring, its deployment, and its ease of use, and really excited to see what it looks like in its full release. If you enjoyed the video, consider dropping a like, consider dropping a subscribe if you want to see more like this, and if you have any questions or want to see me dig into specific features, 
leave them in the comments below. Thank you.